Example 8.2. In this example, we consider a system for heating water, which has an inlet temperature of 20 Celsius and an outlet temperature of 60 Celsius. This system involves a thick wall tube having an inner and outer diameter, which are given. The outer surface of the tube is well insulated and the inside of the wall has an electrical heating part which creates a uniform heat generation rate. If we have a mass flow rate of 0.1 kilograms per second, how long does the tube has to be in order to be able to reach the desired outlet temperature? Also, we need to determine if the inner surface temperature is equal to 70 Celsius at the outlet, what is the local convection coefficient at that particular point? We consider the problem to be a steady. We assume that the heat generation rate is uniform, the fluid is incompressible, and we have no viscous uh, heat dissipation. We start the analysis by evaluating the energy balance at the interface between the fluid and the wall. We said that the amount of energy going in minus the amount of energy leaving plus the amount of energy generated is equal to the change of energy stored at the interface. Uh, there is no energy going in and the system is steady, so we're able to get rid of those two terms. The amount of energy leaving is equal to the amount of convection leaving in that particular region. And that is going to be equal to Q convection is going to be equal to the amount of flow rate, Cp, the difference between the mean temperatures at the outlet and at the inlet, which is given by equation 8.34. We also know that the amount of heat generated in that particular section has to be equal to Q dot times the volume of the wall for that section, and that is equal to pi over 4 t0 square i square times the length. Notice that these two values are equal to each other due to the balance of energy. If we make them equal to each other and we solve for the length of the section, we find that the length is going to be equal to 17.7 .7 meters. Please go back and make sure that you understand where these equations come from and you're able to get the value for the length of the section to reach that particular outlet temperature. The second part of the analysis is to calculate the localized value of the convection coefficient at the outlet. That is found by having the flux of the surface and the convection coefficient at that position and the differences between temperature of the surface at that position and the mean at that particular position. For us to be able to find the flux, we need to have the amount of the energy that it was generated divided by the surface area. Now the surface area is the one that is actually touching the fluid and the wall. The amount of energy generated, which is equal to the value that we have from the previous part, we find it to be Q dot pi over 4, d0 square minus d1 square times L. Remember, this is the amount of E generated times the volume and the cross-sectional area that is touching both the fluid and the wall is equal to pi di L. In this expression, notice that we're able to cancel the value of L, the value of pi, and if we solve for uh, the flux, we're going to find it to be 1.5 times 10 to the 4 watts per meter square. If we substitute the value of the flux and the two temperatures into this expression, we could find that, that the local value of the convection coefficient at the outlet is going to be given us 1500 watts meter square. Okay. 
please go back and double check the calculations and understand why we use these equations and especially why we use this particular value of the surface area into this calculation.